Okay, we're live. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, it feels like it's been a long time since we did a live stream. Let me turn off the lights. Yeah, that looks better, more balanced. Um, it feels like a long time since we've done a live stream, but thank you for joining. I know it's only been a week, but it's been a busy week. Um, yeah, we'll take an hour and a bit to talk about all things accordion and music. I'll monitor the chat here. Hello, Cindy and Moses. Good to see you. Um, yeah, for those of you that are here for the first time, welcome. Again, I look over the live chat and hey, Joe Dottillo. Um, and uh, for those of you that are already have been here before, thank you again for coming. It's great to see your familiar uh, names and obviously associations with faces. Let's, um, I, I hope the sound is okay. We had friends visiting with kids. And uh, I think someone was playing with the knobs just because I had some audio issues. So there might be more reverb, which isn't too bad. But but let me know if you can hear me and see me. I'm assuming everything's okay. Hello, Sue. Good to see you back in New Mexico. Got to see accordion player Edward Aris in Turkey. Check him out on YouTube. Amazing. So I remember you tuned in from Istanbul um, a few weeks ago. And you got a little accordion, right? From a market in Istanbul in Turkey? I think so. Good. Uh, good. Let's do it. Hello, gobbledygook. Hi from Estonia. Good to see you. Gobbledygook. Let's do, um, I had some ideas, so let me tr start to tie them together. Oh, what's the, let me show you what my ideas were. So I'll share my screen. Um, I have a video called, uh, Tango for Beginners Using a Backing Track. I think it's a really nice video. Beautiful accordion. Uh, and Luke uh, made a comment. I don't know if you could see this. I'll zoom in a bit. Oh, too much. How to play a tango like a native is not in sheet music. With a backing track, if it is a good one, you get into a specific mood. Oh, I love this comment. I gave it a heart. Um, how to play tango like a native is not in the sheet music. With a backing track, if it's a good one, you get into a specific mood. There's a lot in this comment, right? Um, there's an importance to sheet music. Sheet music is important. It's telling us the recipe of what to do. Here's where the song is going. But another huge thing is the mood. Um, and in this lesson, I'll, I'll you could search for it on my channel. It's a public video. Um, a backing track is a really nice way to practice. What am I trying to do here? Um, sorry, the, the idea isn't fully formed. Um, Good. Anyways, I love that comment. If you haven't been using backing tracks and you're looking to get a little bit better, a bit more in the mood of playing, backing tracks are a great idea. Here's the idea. So this past week we had friends coming over. One was a guitar player, one was a percussionist, and we played together and it was lovely. And so just like we do with here on the live stream, we'd pull up sheet music and play. And I found that my playing really took off. Kate took a video, maybe I'll share the video. When we played a song um, and we were all looking at the sheet music, it was good. We played the song, it was, you know, two, two. Good, it was lovely. But when we played the sheet music once through and then kind of looked up at each other and took it in a new direction, maybe it was two or three chords, that's when the music really took off. To Luke's point, that's when the the mood really happened, the, the magic, the mood, that's when we really connected. So, so I think that's important. And to tie it all together, this month, the August challenge is to provide a backing track for Jacques, my violinist friend's music. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do to provide a backing track. We've played melody in previous challenges. Now we're providing a backing track. And it's not just sticking to the chords, right? We weren't given chords. It's adding a mood that really makes the music uh, magical. Good. I, I hope that helps. Let let's play uh, a tango tune. I'll switch back to this live stream. Hello, my mom. Um, hello, Pat. Good to see you. It's hot in Texas. <coughs> Yes, that little honer is a blast to play. Awesome, Sue. I'm happy that I remembered that, that it was you. Um, gobbledygook, thank you. My real name is Harry Carl Lepp. 
made an account long ago when I was young, beautiful and stupid name. Me too, with Moshe Zuckter. Not my real name, I'm Ronan. Hello, Evo, good to see you. Um, so, to Luke's comment, let's play a tango. Let's improvise a tango. I'll play a solo tango, and then we'll use the loop to create a quick backing track. And I'll show you for myself, we'll see what happens with the backing track and kind of the creativity and mood that can happen. So, hello, Anne. Good to see you. Um, and hello, Adrian. You well, good to see you too. Let's do, uh, oh, I was going to share a live stream song. So, a tango. I'll give two or three more minutes of instruction. Sorry, it's a lot of speaking today to start off. Uh, Richard uh, wrote last week saying, hey, I, I use the word, the term chord progression. And so Richard did some research as to what a chord progression is, and it's a series of chords. And I shared with Richard my playlist on playing by ear. In general, um, songs have song forms, what I call song forms or song templates. Um, and we see it here, right? Uh, th there are commonalities amongst songs. And a tango is no different. A tango has... Uh, a template. We could say, you know, uh, tango song one, and we choose a chord. Let's choose our one chord. Let's do a D minor tango, right? If I say, let's play a tango in D minor, the recipe is already written for us. A lot of it, not the melody, but the backing track, tango in D minor. Oh, I have an idea of what that's gonna be like. Here, let's write the chord progression, the underlying chords on which to write the song. So it's gonna be uh, a D minor, right? We know the rhythm. Where does it go to? It'll likely go to an A7, right? Um, we see it in La Comparsita. Actually, a Comparsita is A7 to D minor. It's a fun little change, but we'll do D minor. A7, we can go back to the D minor or we can go to the minor four, the G minor, um, C, F, A7. This will be our tango. What does that sound like if you have an accordion at home? Bye! It'll be D minor, D minor. Seven to a G minor to a C to an F to an A7 back to the beginning. Why? Because I chose those chords. It doesn't have to be that. Let's do a tango song two, and and I'll I'll play these tango song two. Um. We'll do this as a D minor, right? To a G minor. Da, 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 to an A7. Da, 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 to a B flat. To A7, to D minor. Good. That, that might work, right? So this looks like D minor. To a G minor. Seven to a B flat, A seven, D minor. I think that's nice. Um, yeah, and we could take it to a part B, right? With a D seven to a G minor, bum 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 to D minor, um, to an E seven to an A seven. And here's what that looks like. We went from a B flat to A7 to D minor, D7. G minor to D minor to an A to an E to an E to an A. Back to the beginning. These are chord progressions. They are common among song forms. Rock, we, we know that blues has the C7 to an F7 to a C7 to a G7 to an F7, a 12 bar blues. We know that Eastern European music sounds similar because there are familiar chord progressions. Same thing with tangos. Yeah, if we know these song forms, we could add 
we don't need the sheet music as much. We need the sheet music for the melody. Comparsita is different than Libertango, but these things can help in taking songs their own direction. Good, let's play these. Um, let me go back to the live chat to make sure everything is fine. Lily, hello, it's your first live stream of yours. I've made it to, thank you, Lily. Thank you for uh, joining us. Let's do it, good. Seems there are many accordion enthusiasts. Do any of you use some s effects pedals? Good question, probably good. Good, let's play, um, let's play a tango. I'll go back to D minor A7. I'll play it once and then I'll switch windows. One, two, uh, one, two, three. D minor. Two A7. Two G minor. Two C. Two F. Two A7. There's a nice way of ending tango songs. Let's put that as a backing track. Do I need the keyboard? I could probably backing track it with the accordion. Let's do it with the keyboard. Sorry, I'm gonna turn my back to you. We'll do a backing track on the piano just to have the distinction between, between sounds. Um, I'm gonna use a bass. I don't know if the bass shows up on cell phones. If you're on a cell phone, you may not hear this. Um, so we'll do the same chords, but I'll do a backing track and then I'll play accordion as the lead. Um, how does it go? Um, one, two, Good, so we have a backing track. Tambourine on tango? No. We'll do spoons. There's a backing track. It's not perfect, but it's fine. So what does this give me? To Luke's point, now I can concentrate on melody. Right, this is like one of the challenges that we've done in the past months. Given a certain scale, right? D minor. Bye. 
allows me to do, and I talked about this in my backing tracks and in the unit on accordion love on accompanying musicians, this gives me an opportunity to practice. If I'm practicing trills, I'm gonna practice my trills. See what sounds good. So maybe I would practice that. Good. Um, how do I pause this? That way. Let's do another tango. Um, let's do another tango, the other set of chords. I'll share my screen again. We're going to do tango song two, which is another song form of a tango. This one is D minor to, 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 to G minor to A7. Flat, A7, D minor, D7, G minor, to loop myself and now I could do the the actual melody
another nice thing with backing tracks? I could practice adding more to the backing track. tool to have a backing track. I create my own backing track right now, but you don't need to do that, right? Um, let me share my screen again. On, on accordion love, accompanying voice and others with your accordion. Oh, let me share my screen. I think this entire time I was sharing my screen. Um, there are examples of how to accompany, how to, uh, how to do rhythm, how to do that padding. Um, and yeah, on uh, using a backing track. This video is public. You can go look at it. Whatever you're trying to do, jazz, fusion, uh, tango, waltzes, people have built these backing tracks. It's free for you to use them as students. Um, go out and explore them. I think it's a really wonderful uh, learning tool. Good. Let me go back to the live stream. Hello, every everyone. Um, Evo, the whole melody, my melody, I have a few lessons on how to improvise. I was in general using the notes from those chords. So my chord progression was D minor, A7, G minor, right? I did a B flat, A, D, G minor, A, D minor. Those were my chords. So my notes were D, F, A minor. D, F, A minor. From the G minor, I added the G and the B flat. From the A7, I added the C sharp and the E. So it was really a D minor scale. I was using that to improvise. How I made it into a tango was by doing the... was by doing that rhythm. This could have very easily been a waltz. I could take those same chords, D minor to A7, B flat, A7, D minor to D7. Same chords, same notes. Whatever key uh, scale that is, just different mood, different feeling. If there was a waltz backing track, a tango wouldn't work there. So I'm learning how to play waltzes. Um, yeah, good, good question, Evo. Hello, Street Milk Mine. Good to see you, Denise. 
your playing is coming through loud and clear, but your voice is quiet today, and my husband's playing along with his uke. I'll try speaking a bit closer into the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, D minor scale. Yeah, just like the last challenge. Yes. Janice, I saw that you guys had a bear in your backyard. I hope, I hope the bear is safe. I hope you're safe. Um, relative of F is D minor. Denise, I love ukulele. Ukes are great. Hello from the Orcas Island. Hello, Leslie Little. Good to see you. Good. Let's, um, good. I, th I hope I got all those ideas through. If I didn't, it's fine. I, I encourage you to play along, A, with other players, to look up from the sheet music when you can. Right, even here, as I'm playing along like D minor to A7, eventually when I close my eyes and I internalize those chords, I feel like more of me comes out of my music. Maybe it's just because I closed my eyes, but, but I'm not sure. Good, uh, if someone has requests, let me know. Um, I'm gonna drink my coffee a little bit. Um, what do I have? Playing the August challenge, tango, the backing track, Chord progression, Richard. My my uh, my uh, plan for today is done. So um, just to give you some housekeeping notes, I'll. This is the last live stream for two weeks. Um, we're going to Toronto for uh, next weekend, so there won't be a live stream because we'll be up in the air, and then uh, we'll still be in Toronto in two weeks. So I'm gonna record the September challenge this week. Um, I'll be replying to emails. I should have email access in Toronto. I hear they have intranet there. Um, I might be a bit slow. I'll probably take the melodica with me so I can show so I can show you some techniques. Um, but otherwise, there won't be live streams uh, for the next two weeks. I don't know any U2. Is that weird, Anna? I I I. I I know there are YouTube fanatics and um, not fanatics. They play beautiful music. I never learned any YouTube. And I don't. I don't know Afton pa Solivk. I'm sorry, Simon. Yeah, these are all beautiful songs. Evo Two, Albatross by Fleetwood Mac, Peter Green. I don't know it either. Take those chords. We can do non tests. I kind of want to loop those chords though. I'm thinking of, uh, let me show you the chords I'm thinking of. This is one of my favorite kind of things, right? From the, we start the song in D minor, right? So D minor. Fine, but to go to a D7, build that tension. Now it needs to resolve G minor. And I'm gonna still steal this little progression. G minor plus four, C, ma C major plus four. One, two, three, four, F. Come back to the A7. A7, come back to D minor. So essentially we're doing this, but instead of the A7, we're doing this. This is not tango song one. This is gonna be, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like a Michael Nyman. Um, Mike, Michael Ni Nyman, is that his name? Uh, Michael Nyman. Yeah, he, 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 he loves doing the... He did the thief, the cook, the wife, and her lover, right? Du, 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 du. So I say Michael Nyman sang one, the song one. This is literally the song from the thief, the cook, the wife, and her lover. Let's do it. The song is huge, it's like a 20 minute piece, but let's let's loop that. Um, so it's circle of fifths from D minor. And I will monitor the live chat uh, for Harvest Moon. Um, 
Okay, let's write this. We'll do harvest moon. Someone else said um, Nantes. I don't know Wellerman. I don't know Tango of Roses. And I don't know the way to San Jose. Sorry, I asked for songs and I don't know any of these songs. I'm sorry. I saw you helped someone with Memphis theme on Reddit. I'd love to hear a full version if you know it. Oh, Taylor, that was a... So, so yeah, it's a beautiful song. I don't know the song and I don't remember it. It was just a reply to... I, I forget the person's username. Uh, I don't know it. I didn't listen to the real version, just to the person's version. Uh, the Blue Danube, AJ first, AJ last. Um... <laughs> that well enough either let's play uh hi didi <laughs> let's do uh let's do a loop let's try harvest moon and nantes and then i'll get back to that michael nyman improvisational song do we like radiohead heck yeah let's do radiohead good uh harvest moon on this harvest moon <laughs> It's D major, right? I'm in D major. Welcome back, Vivian. It's good to see you. Petunia Clark, uh, Things Will Be Great When You're Downtown is a beautiful song. I like all the requests. Thank you. Uh, I know raindrops keep falling on my head, but I haven't listened to it. So I could probably cheat my way through it. Um, that was Harvest Moon. It's a nice song. Again, a song that's a little bit not repetitive. I think it requires Neil Young's voice, right? Uh, let's do a Radiohead Creep, sure. We'll do it in C major. I think they play it in a key, maybe C major. C to E7 to F to F minor. I think that's the whole song. C major.
birthday, Evo. Happy birthday, Evo. Happy belated birthday. Uh, we said we do non-test. Radiohead Creep. What a nice song on the accordion. Um, I'm just reading Anna's comment that Jan, to figure it out by ear is really just practice for recognition the intervals. Yes, it could also be helpful to look at the sheet music, the notes in each measure to see if they align with a particular triad. Yeah. Let me, I'll share a playlist. Um, sorry, it's not fun to look at someone just being on the computer. Um, but let me share this playlist, which is called Playing Music by Ear on the Accordion. I've been meaning to re-record these lessons. Look at it maybe after the live stream, but keep that there. It will show up in the live chat. I record... Maybe I'll keep playing. But in general, playing music by ear is part science, part creativity and practice. The science part... And they really go together quite smoothly. Um, there are some steps that are easy, like is the song in a major or a minor? You can kind of figure that out. Which key is the song in? You could really pinpoint it. And then the intervals, the chord changes. So if I'm listening to a tango, I have a template. I have three or four options um, that I could choose. Likely they're gonna fit. And sometimes there's a song that doesn't fit into that template. Same thing with rock and roll, with Beatles. If I'm starting with a C major, I've identified that the song is a major or minor. It's a it, major or minor, it's a major. And then what's the key of the song? Oh, it's C major. Now it needs to change chords, okay. What's the chord that it's most likely to change to? From the one, from my C major, it's likely to just go next door either to the four or the five, this F or the G. Uh, many years from now, not quite. Many years from now, yes, that fits. That's the practice and art part. The science is, there aren't many chords that it could change to. And I go through in that playlist examples of the most common kind of chord changes. In Radiohead's Creep, we saw ba -da -da -da, Couldn't look you in the eye That's a really interesting chord change. It's not the G or the F, right? Couldn't look you in the eye No ba -da 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 -da, da -da 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 -da. No What is it? Is it a walk down to an A minor? Like in Hallelujah? Couldn't look you in the eye No Is it a D minor? Which is another really common chord change, the minor two. Couldn't look you in the eye. No, that doesn't fit. There's a really specific rule, the major third. We see it in David Bowie's Space Oddity, right? This is ground control to major Tom. Couldn't look you in the eye. Oh, so becoming familiar with those, what Anna calls intervals, with going from one chord to the other, the practice of the ear and having a little chart that says, oh, this is a rock song. Here are the four options that I have. What did the Beatles choose here? What did Leonard Cohen choose here? 
and we see commonalities between those things. So those are song forms. That's figuring songs out by ear. That's a toolkit that I have and musicians develop. Um, sorry, that, I, I have it because I've been practicing lots and lots and lots of having played with people and saying, okay, what are they playing there? Oh, they're going to the minor too. Uh, and again, 80, 90% of the time, we'll see the same chords over and over again. Every once in a while, we'll come across some beautiful new chord combinations. From a C major, it's very rare to go to, uh, to an E flat minor. Does it happen? Sure, very rarely. Can it? Sure. So it's important to have our ear attuned to that too. But in general, C major will go to some other chords. Good, let's keep playing. Um, thank you, Rudy. Oh, I, I want to play downtown now. I don't know it well enough. An F. Another beautiful chord change. F, D minor, G minor, C. Right? We see that all the time in the Beatles. Uh, but... Petunia Clark's downtown, and when you feel lonely, ba 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 ba, ba you can always go downtown. Downtown. Now, there are other chord combinations too that I'm probably missing. Anyways, I don't know the song well enough, but a beautiful song. Rudy, I'm excited to see you uh, play it. Hey, Ronan, Jamie, Jaime. Jaime, yeah. Yesterday I performed La Vie en Rose in front of a crowd on stage. That was the first time I performed. Thank you. What was it like? That's huge. Congratulations, Mazel Tov. What was it like? Were you nervous? Did you get it right? Were you playing with sheet music? Were people listening? Were you in the background? So many questions. I've played La Vie en Rose lots. My, if you remember my clarinet friend, Mike, uh, on my YouTube channel, when him and his wife walked down the aisle, I played. And the coolest thing is to look at your good friend uh, walking down the aisle and being able to accompany them. That's awesome, Jaime. Thank you for sharing that. Good. We had a request for Nantes. Limonchiki. There were two requests for Limonchiki. Good. Limonchiki, uh, a klezmer tune. From the D major, usually klezmer tunes will go down to the C minor or the E flat, right? So let, let's play it. <laughs> Thank you. 
about backing tracks, for me at least, is that my playing changes when my, I remove my, my left hand, right? I could take my time a little bit, right? Sounds really cool, and I wouldn't usually do that, but I could practice that. other than a That's Limonchiki, beautiful song. And again, usefulness of backing tracks. Good, thank you, Sina. Good, and uh, Jaime, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. It might just be Jamie. Um, awesome, good job on, um, on playing. Uh, Class Canada starting tomorrow. Yeah, AJ first, AJ last. I think, Eric, I think it's you or someone. I saw the message come through, but I was playing. Um, yeah, you're AJ first, AJ last. Um, yeah, Class Canada is is it is it happening in real life or I think just virtual? Um, it's a super cool event that I've been meaning to go to for for ten years. I think uh, I think it happens in Quebec. It's Klezmer, world's top players and teachers come together for a week. Uh, people bring their families. If you're at all interested in klezmer and music, whether you're an accordion player, guitar player, keyboard, horns, percussion, this is the place to be. Um, it's like a sleepover thing. I think the events are virtual this year, but I'm not sure. I've always wanted to go. I have lots of friends that play there. There are shows. Uh, it's for all levels. I've only heard good things. I just haven't been able to go there. When we lived in Toronto, uh, Kate and I, I think we were just dating, maybe even... I think we didn't have kids and I had a motorcycle with a sidecar. We were going to take a road trip. But one of those things, it just never worked out. It's good coffee. Thank you. 
John Goodwin, they are how I hear myself. So I can't hear what I'm doing now. I know there's a sound. I can't hear it. If I was, if you guys weren't here um, and I had an amplifier, I could loop one thing. But as soon as it's looped back, it would start feeding back. I don't mind it. That's why I had it hooked up uh, in the house. So it's so that it doesn't feed back. Yeah, and there's no way for me to to give an example just because I don't have an amplifier. But you can imagine that if it goes la da la 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 la, it starts to feed back through the microphone. So there's no place for silence, which is okay. But it very quickly starts to get like a big reverb and echo. So I prefer the headphones. So I prefer the headphones. Yeah, it it it's not. And right here in the live stream, this is the only way that I could hear the the looper and the keyboard yeah good question john virtual class canada available yeah eric feel free to to share the website um good magnifico jaime una melodia had a beautiful uh, melody beautiful song Let's play Unchained Melody and B flat like that. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <gasps> I'm thinking of that Elvis concert where he's. Anyways, it's a beautiful song. You can imagine, you can imagine Elvis singing that. As time goes by. Beautiful song. Um, sorry, sometimes ideas are better formed in the head than, than in real life. Um, good, a few more minutes. Please do play something traditional Russian with backing track, but not Korobeynik. Smiley face. Let's do some traditional Russian music. Um, <clears throat> the backing track oftentimes uh, takes away from the song, so I won't start with a backing track. Um, or maybe we will. Sorry, let me just take this off. It was cold in the morning, and now the sun's coming out. 
What about playing Memory from Cats? It's similar to the song you're playing now. Edgar, I've never watched Cats, so I don't know any of the music. I'm sorry. Um, but I've heard lots of good things. Okay, let's do... Ooh, let's do a Russian song. Uh, let's do Oche Chornia. The, the issue for me with a backing track is it confine, confines me. It sets very hard boundaries. And sometimes I like to play with a tempo. I like to bring the song up and down. And let me do it. It's fine. One, two. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the backing track with a uh, keyboard to get some differentiation of, uh, of sound. Um, we'll do it in G minor. Ba, maybe B minor. Ba, da, ba, ba, da. So G minor to D major. Sorry for showing you my back. One, two, three. Ba da da ba ba. Ba da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ba da da da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ba da da. We'll loop it twice. Da da. Tempo. <laughs> That's okay. I'm laughing because I always sp I sped up a lot. So I'm gonna still create the backing track. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye, those of you that are leaving.
That's what we can't do with a loop pedal. We can't really increase the tempo. Sorry about the ending there. Uh, thank you for those of you that, that joined us this week. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll play a little bit longer. Um, yeah, most, if not all, of the songs that I played today, there's sheet music and lessons for on accordionlove.com. There's a free three-day trial. I think most of you are, are members. Thank you, Evo. Um, yeah, so, so check it out. Let me go through the cello. My husband Pete just said every part of that was excellent. Thank you. Awesome, Viv. Thank you. Good. That was something Russian traditional with a loop pedal. Wonderful. Let's do... What shall we do? Mm -hmm. I told my wife last week I'd love to do a live stream just in the living room in front of the piano. I still feel a little bit more comfortable playing piano than accordion, I think, when it comes to accompanying voice, at least. I played, um, I played Tiny Dancer by Elton John when my friends were over. It was really nice. Um, we should, we should try it on accordion. I don't know the chords because I haven't tried it, but let's try it. <laughs> Hello, David. You're watching you on the way home from football. Amazing. <laughs> I feel like this is a song where we need to sing, right? And then it goes, uh, Know how it feels so real, lying here, no one near, only you. And you can hear me when I say it softly. Thank you, 
Diana. I, I learned piano first. I learned keyboard first when I was, my parents signed me up when I was nine, I think. Eight or nine, I learned keyboard. And then piano, and then, and then I learned guitar. Not really well, but I learned guitar, and then I picked up the accordion. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, everyone. Maybe that's it for this week. Um, I'll drink my coffee. If anyone lives in or near Toronto, let me know. I'll be there um, next week-ish. a short loop with those that Michael Nyman song but it might be a major one thank you as always awesome thank you thank you Anne thank you Leslie
That's so cool. Oh. Yeah, that was uh, an improvisation and a really cool chord progression, right? We did a... That came from the Unchained Melody, the... Oh, my my darling, I pondered for your touch. Right, C, E, A minor, G, F, G, C. We just held it a little bit longer. And we started to build using using a C major scale. Notes that sounded nice. For me, this is how I practice. This is like a huge exhale for me um, to just start off something and just keep throwing stuff against the canvas. We start off with a blank canvas. We did that and then we did the same thing with the right hand and what sounds good? In the end there I love that. Uh, oh, missing those. I love that and how does it interplay with those notes? So it's just for me at least pure exploration and this is how I practice. It's just if I get five, ten minutes a day, this is what I do. Um, whatever you do, enjoy it. Uh, this is, again, just such a big exhale. <laughs> so I really appreciate I appreciate the 30 people that are still here. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Evo and Lily and Christian and Anne and everyone who's uh, here. Um, oh, yeah, we won't be here for two weeks. Man, oh, man. Send me your questions. I'll still answer them. Um, yeah, I should still have time every day to answer your questions. Uh, thank you to everyone who's submitting to the August challenge. There's still a week left. Yeah, it's the 22nd. Um, and I look forward to, the, to seeing you in the September challenge, too, and in September. Thank you, everyone. I hope you're healthy and well. Bye-bye. Da 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 bum 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 bum.